Good morning, friends, and a very, very warm welcome to our service today on this absolutely glorious uh, Sunday morning. Uh, it's wonderful to see folks here in church, uh, and it's wonderful to be joined by folks online today. Uh, wherever uh, we are gathering this morning, we gather as one church family, and we know that God is with us as we worship, share, learn, uh, and recommit ourselves to his service together. Our call to worship this morning is led by the Cargo family, and I'm going to allow them to lead us in our worship now. This is our privilege and joy to bring praises to God. It is our privilege and joy to sing to our Lord. As we come before God in worship, we share the words from Psalm 96, verses 1 to 6. We will sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous words among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of all the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honour and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. So much guys, let us worship the Lord as we sing together the 23rd Psalm uh, to the Stuart Town End tune, The Lord's My Shepherd. Let us worship. Just green. He 
I, I should make apologies to anyone who is uh, watching today uh, online. Uh, what I forgot, because I've not been in the reader's desk uh, for a wee while, is I'm uh, standing right next to the, the microphone that, that broadcasts out to the live feed, and uh, I was singing there, so uh, you might have heard some awful singing. Uh, for the rest of the singing, I will make sure that I I'll do what I normally do and step back a few steps from the microphone. It was almost the end before I realized that I was singing uh, into the live feed. My friends, let's join together in worship in our opening prayer. Let's pray. God of light and hope, you are the one who created the gift of light at the very dawn of time. And Lord God, we praise you for the beauty of the earth around us that you've made. An earth that is majestic in all seasons. Winter, spring, summer, and autumn where we find ourselves now. As the dark uh, is starting to come, we know, Lord, that you are the light of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the world, may your light shine upon us this day as we gather to worship you in church and online. Enable us to learn from you. Open our ears to your word and inspire and, and, cha and challenge us with your love. Holy Spirit, light of God, whose radiance shines constantly upon our daily lives. Fill us all afresh with joy, with peace, and with oneness as we meet collectively as a church family. Lord, we may not all be physically present together in the one room, but we are spiritually together in the Spirit as brothers and sisters in Christ, as one church family. God of light and hope, you have done so much for us, more than we deserve, more than we could list, more than we can comprehend. We thank you for all your good gifts, especially the gift of loved ones and the gift of your son, Jesus, and your spirit who is always with us. And Lord God, for the times when we fall short, forgive us for the times when we fail to acknowledge just how blessed we are, forgive us. For the times we show too little care to those who are struggling, forgive us. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the world, we are sorry for the words we use and the actions that we commit that harm others, that cause tension, that spread darkness rather than light. Holy Spirit, light of God, as we confess our wrongs, fill us afresh with the light of forgiveness and enable us each one to lead better lives in the week ahead, lives that radiate the light of Jesus to all those around us, family, friends, colleagues, neighbors. And Lord, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us how to say together the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the next part of our service, uh, we're going to read God's word. And Hazel today is going to reflect upon God's word for us. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to use the, the one hymn in between the readings. It's a short hymn, so it's really as a, as a prelude to the readings and as a response to each of the two readings. So we're going to sing Abba Father and then 
Lynn Kelly will read to us from Psalm 139 in the Old Testament, and then we'll sing Abba Father again, and then Lynn's daughter Anna will read to us from Romans chapter 8 in the New Testament, and then we'll sing Abba Father again, and Hazel will lead us in reflecting on God's word. So, and we remain seated uh, throughout that whole time. Let us hear the word of God, but first we sing Abba Father. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live accordingly to the flesh. For if you live accordingly to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When you cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that you are children of God. If children then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him.
Good morning. It's a real privilege for me to be able to share with you today some of the reflections on God's Word that we heard Lynn and Anna read. And I'm very grateful to Bryce for this opportunity. But I'd also like to thank all of you, first of all, for welcoming me and for the encouragement and also your patience with me as I try to learn all of your names and get to know you a little bit better. I'm really enjoying my time here at St Mary's so far. This is week four. And so far, I've had the opportunity and privilege to celebrate the sacrament of baptism with Lily and our family to join in the joy of marriage uh, with Billy and Amy, and also to share in the sorrow, but also the privilege of celebrating a life well lived with Alec and Valerie at Isabel's funeral. Also last week, it was a real privilege to join in the sacrament of Holy Communion with you all. And even this week, I've had the pleasure of meeting some of you at the the coffee morning. And now, I have the real privilege of sharing what God has placed on my heart uh, for today. It really is a joy and a privilege to be here. But it's also a responsibility And it's one that I take very seriously. So before I begin my reflection, will you join me as I pray? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word to us today. Thank you that your word is still as relevant today as it was when it was written. And now as we reflect on this word, still our minds away from the buzz of the outside world and this afternoon's plans. Focus our minds on you, Lord. Open our ears to hear you clearly and open our hearts to respond to your call. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Both of the passages that we heard this morning offer great encouragement. The language in Psalm 139 is really very personal. And as the psalmist outlines the many ways that God is continually with us. So we can see just how much God knows us. God knows everything about us. Our thoughts, our words, our actions. And still he walks along the path with us. So I'd like us all to take a wee moment to think about our path in life. Think about what kind of path we're on just now. If you just imagine the path that's in front of you. We've got some slides that you'll see in just a moment. So perhaps just now the path, it's straight. Life is fine. Everything is okay. And you can see the way ahead clearly to a destination. Or maybe it's twisty, the path that you're on. The journey may be feeling slow or sluggish and plans aren't exactly how we'd like them to be. And maybe we're not too sure exactly what is round the next bend. Perhaps the path is feeling very narrow and it's a struggle to stay on the right path. 
Perhaps there's temptation to step off, maybe to go astray, go in a different direction. Maybe the path is dark and rough and you're finding it hard to see where you're going. You can't see what direction of travel there is. Or even it's a glorious day, a flat path, the sun on your back and the beauty surrounding your path is just amazing. I have a little card that I carry in my handbag and it's from Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know what I have planned for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper, not to harm you. Plans to give a future filled with hope. So whatever our path, wherever we are today, we can be assured that God has brought all of us here for a reason for his purposes. And we can be assured that they're good purposes. And so, with our reading this morning, it's with confidence that we can hear the encouraging words. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. Isn't it great to know that we have a God who has good plans for us? And he is also the God who knows us intimately, who knows us better than we know ourselves. We heard that God knows our every action. It says in verse 2 of Psalm 139, you know when I sit and when I rise. And verse 3 confirms that he is familiar with all my ways. So to be known by someone means that we are special, we are loved. Perhaps you have a a partner, a husband, a wife, a family member, a friend who knows you really well, perhaps in some ways better than you know yourself too. But what a great privilege it is to be known by God. We have a personal loving God. But the psalmist goes on to say that there is nothing that can be hidden from God, no matter how much we may try. It says, where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee? Nowhere. God is with us. Nothing is hidden from God. So perhaps, if we're honest, that might be quite a scary thought too. It brings a responsibility to do the right thing so that we don't need to hide, so that nothing needs to be hidden. For many years, I hid or at least I thought I was hiding from God. Things I wasn't proud of, sometimes wrong things I had done, mistakes I'd made. There's also the things that I should have done. Kindnesses I didn't do, apologies I didn't make, gratitude I didn't show, perhaps you can relate. But one of my favourite scripture passages is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And it's often used at weddings or indeed at special occasions where love is expressed. You might be familiar with it. I have this a picture frame in our bedroom at home. It speaks of love 
And you may be thinking of the words, love is patient, love is kind. These are probably the best known parts, but my favorite part is a bit further down the passage. My favorite part is where it says, love keeps no record of wrongs. That's right, love keeps no record of wrongs. Does anyone remember the dreaded report cards at school? Or even more recently, the appraisals at work, wondering what actions, what things you've said or done have been remembered and which were considered to be good and which were not so good. It's not always easy receiving that kind of feedback, feeling judged or that someone is noting your mistakes. So this got me thinking, why? Why would God love us? Why does he keep forgiving? Why does he keep no record of wrong? And so importantly, why does he love us so much, so much that he gave his son Jesus and let him suffer and die a most horrific death on the cross for us, for each of us, for you, for me. Why? Because he's our creator and we are his children. He loves us. So what does it mean to be a child of God. What does it mean to be a child? We all have biological parents. Some of us may also have adoptive parents or foster parents, but generally we all have someone who parents us, someone who cares for us, who loves us and nurtures us, nurtures us until we become adults and perhaps often well after that too. My own mum used to say I was and always would be her little girl, even when I was well into my 30s. But as we read in Paul's letter to the Romans, we are also God's children. We are heirs of God, heirs to the kingdom of God here and now, and also in eternity. In Roman times, adoption into a family was a difficult and serious process, even far, far more difficult than adoption today. So when Paul uses the metaphor of being adopted as a child of God, this is greatly significant. It wasn't easy to become an heir, so this was a big deal, and the Roman people knew this. Sonship and adoption as a son brought great privilege. Everything that the father owned comes to the heir. Sometimes a slave would be adopted into the family and would gain the full rights of the father. And so it is for us we too gain the full rights, the great privilege of being an heir, a co-heir we heard in the reading with Christ, a co-heir with Christ as a child of God. Jesus has paid the price for us. Through Christ, we're not just forgiven, but we're justified. Jesus has taken on our sins in our place. And therefore, as God's children, we are righteous before God. We already know the good news. The good news that Jesus rose from that horrific death. 
He defeated death. He paid the price for human sin. And he's alive today for each and every one of us, for you and for me. And it really is good news. And sometimes, just as the psalmist says, said it in verse 6 of 130, Psalm 139, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. So I wonder if it's all too wonderful for us to fully appreciate. I wonder if it's too wonderful to truly appreciate that deep love which our Father has for us. I wonder if we can really comprehend just how much God loves us, his children, his precious and beloved children, that even while we are still sinners, Christ died for us because of love. A thought to finish on. With this great privilege, this great love, there's also a real responsibility. So what is our response to this great love? How will I respond? How will we respond? Well, Jesus commands us two things. Two things. First, we are to love God with all our heart and soul and mind. And like this, we are to love one another, to love our neighbor. So today and this coming week, let's be encouraged, encouraged that God loves us. Be encouraged that through Christ we are forgiven. Jesus has paid the price of our sin. But be challenged, be challenged to respond. So let's love God and let's love one another. Amen. And may God give us the grace and mercy to humbly do his will. Our next hymn is a favorite of mine and the words are just so powerful. So as we sing this wonderful hymn, let's really take to heart the words that are in it and think about God the Father's love for us. We continue our worship with hymn 549, How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
We're going to now dedicate our offerings that we bring to God, that we've collected today as we came in, and that we give in various ways through standing orders and that to the church. But we're also going to dedicate our whole lives uh, to God. So let us pray. Loving God, we bring you all our gifts today. We bring the gifts of our lives, our time, our talents, our money, our resources. Lord, we bring these gifts as a small way of thanking you for all that you have given. And we bring them as an outward expression of all that we want to offer you in return. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being known and loved. Help us responsibly to love you and others in return. Lord God, today we bring our lives together. We bring our prayers, our worship, our words, our deeds, our living and our loving. We bring ourselves in grateful praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who taught us to say, Abba, Father, Amen. We have some family news before our intercessory prayers. Uh, and first of all, just a, a wee reminder of a funeral that is coming up this week. One of our members, Mrs. May Graham, died. Uh, that was last week uh, and I announced her, her death at last Sunday, but just a wee reminder that her funeral service will be this Wednesday, 29 September, 10.30 at Hollytown Crematorium, and we remember all of her family and loved ones at this time. Our thoughts and our prayers are, are with you. I also uh, have to announce today that the death of Mr. Robert uh, Osborne, Bob, who used to sing in the choir at uh, one stage in uh, his time when he was younger in the congregation. Uh, Bob's service has happened, but we remember his faithful service and we remember all those who love and care for him. So we think today of Bob at peace and at rest and we think of his family and friends. We uh, started our new coffee morning last week, and uh, I remember at one stage I, I sent a wee text to, to Helen, my, my wife, uh, because she was interested just to know how it was going, and I think I said, uh, coffee morning is going like a fair. And that's always a good thing with a coffee morning. If it's going like a fair, then it's a success. And uh, it's open for two hours, so people would come in and go, uh, come and go, but uh, we set out various tables, smaller tables, bigger tables, and it's all table service, uh, and folks were able to come in, uh, have a chat, and, uh, and it was all done really safely. There was a couple of ladies in the, the congregation, uh, in the coffee morning, I should say, last week, who both work in the, the NHS, and uh, uh, they, they came and they said to me, you know, uh, this has been run so, so well and safely. Uh, congratulations to all those who have organized it. So that is no greater compliment there. So it was a, a lovely, lovely time. And if you are free uh, this or any Wednesday morning between 10 and 12 noon, it's in the Avon Hall and you're assured of a, a warm welcome, a tea or a coffee and uh, some nice biscuits to, to eat as well and some fellowship. Next Sunday, uh, we celebrate Harvest Thanksgiving, and we're going to be joined next week uh, with our young folks. Uh, young folks are not meeting in junior church today, because it's the September holiday, so that's why we don't hear them outside. We've heard them outside in the love of the weather over the last few weeks, and it's been lovely to hear their, their voices. Uh, but we're going to have members of the junior church in with us next week, and that's another wee step back towards normality, how we do things, uh, because since our services have begun uh, and junior churches started back, we, we've not had the young folks in. This is a, another wee step towards what we normally do. So Harvest Thanksgiving next week, uh, people will want to know about gifts. So our gifts this year 
are going to the food bank. Now, a lot of misinformation uh, circulated about the, the food bank in, in Motherwell, uh, a lot of confusion. Uh, basically, uh, the food bank that takes physical things like tins, uh, pastas, coffee, rices, UHT milk, all of these things uh, that we've been used to collecting over the years, not just at harvest, but also at other times of the year. Some people bring uh, a wee bag week by week. Uh, they are going to the food bank as we know it, which is now centered at the Maranatha center. So uh, please, if you're bringing a, a, a bag of food next week, it's things like uh, tinned foods, pastas, and uh, rices, coffees. These are the sort of things that are really useful for the, the food bank rather than perishables. So if you bring uh, along a bag next week, it will uh, go as part of our harvest donation to the food bank, which is now based at the Maranatha Center. If you're not able to come in uh, on Sunday next week, uh, the church is open on Tuesday and Thursday mornings for receiving uh, offering, people's free will offerings. And, and if it's okay, Ian, we could receive any bags that, that come in and we'll put them as part of our harvest display. So if you're Tuesday morning, 10 till 12 this week, you could bring in your bags as, as well. And then after next Sunday, they'll all go to the Maranatha Center. There is another wee option though, and uh, what used to be the, the food bank, the Lanarkshire Basics Food Bank, uh, that seemed to, at one stage, the information seemed to be that it folded, but it hasn't. If you look in the, the church magazine, what they've done is they've just changed uh, the emphasis. So there is this physical food bank up at the at Maranatha Center, but what was the old food bank is now uh, uh, an organization that receives monetary gifts, and then uh, they buy food tokens from places like Farm Foods uh, and uh, Aldi, Lidl, uh, uh, Asda, and, and they give them to needy families in the local area. So next week, if you uh, would rather, uh, or if you would also want to give a monetary gift uh, to, to give to folks in this way, if you just bring along an envelope, you can put it in the offering plate and it just says uh, a harvest donation, that's all you need to write on it, and that money will go to the, the Basics Food Bank who will purchase uh, tokens to give out to, to needy families. So it's another way of doing uh, food bank. So we've got two options, uh, the physical food bank with the tins, etc., and also the monetary gift for uh, uh, the food bank that buys the, the tokens for families to, to spend. That's our uh, opportunities for next week. Next week uh, is harvest. Uh, as you know, uh, we don't seem to have any problem of folks pop in on a Sunday morning. We're able to incorporate folks and that's great. Uh, but if you do know you're coming, uh, please uh, uh, feel free to, to phone in advance. What it does is it shortcuts the process of, of having your name uh, taken at the door for track and trace purposes. So if you know you're coming next week, uh, all you need to do is phone the church office number which you'll find on the website, it's up on the screen at the moment. Leave your, your contact details and you'll be included in the list for next Sunday and just ticked in. Uh, but anyone can turn up. If you are uh, just wanting to turn up on a Sunday morning, we just take your name uh, and details. There is no, no problems with that whatsoever. And uh, just want to finally thank Hazel for uh, bringing God's word to us today. And uh, it was lovely to, to hear you uh, preach your first uh, reflections with us this morning, Hazel. Thank you so much for your encouragement and for your, your challenges. And we also today want to, to think about folks uh, who are uh, out and about. We've got some folks in the congregation who are back from being away. Uh, and uh, I know Marlene and John have been uh, away in Germany uh, with family. It's lovely to have you guys back. Uh, Billy and Emmy have been on honeymoon in St. Lucia. Uh, lovely to have you uh, back today, and Billy's uh, here with us today. But we've got a number of folks I know who are away uh, because it's the, the September weekend. And wherever they are, we pray God's blessing on those members of our family who are enjoying a, a break at this time. But now let's join together in our intercessory prayers. Let's pray. Let us now pray to God, the light of life. 
that we may truly become the salt and light of the world. Lord, let your light shine in us. That there may be more love on earth, Lord. We ask you to help your people to be more understanding and friendlier to one another and to share more readily with those in need. Lord, let your light shine in us. That there may be greater justice on earth. We ask you to show governments and public officials how to make room in their priorities and budgets for those who are socially deprived, economically in need, and seeking refuge and sanctuary. Lord, let your light shine in us. That there may be more peace on earth. We ask you to enable all nations and all individual people, including ourselves, to put an end to words of hatred and threats of revenge. Help us not to see others as different, but as fellow human beings made in the image of God. Lord, let your light shine in us. That there may be more joy on earth. We ask you to encourage all who follow Jesus to show sympathy and affection to one another, to be faithful in our friendships and concerned about our communities and indeed all of your creation. Lord, let your light shine in us. That there may be more faith on earth. We ask you to empower your church, including ourselves, to live as children of light before you and in the sight of all people. Lord, let your light shine in us. And caring God in these next few moments of silence, hear us as we pray for all who are unwell and for those who walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And Lord God, we pray that your light may shine on all the earth. As your people, however limited we are, let our words and our actions reflect the light of your love in this coming week. In the name of Jesus Christ, our brother and our Lord. Amen. Our last hymn today is uh, All I Once Held Dear. Ronald knows it well. Uh, I do. Hazel does. One or two folks in the congregation will inevitably know this. But Ronald was saying, we're not sure if we've used it uh, before uh, or used it for a while in church. So what's going to happen is Ronald's going to play the verse and chorus through just so we can hear the tune. So if you let the verse and chorus play through first, and then we'll begin singing together after that, that once through. This song is All I Once Held Dear, Knowing You, Jesus, Knowing You. Let us worship.
after the benediction uh, today, Ronald is going to play as a closing voluntary as we leave the uh, tune Ode to Joy. And folks uh, can leave now uh, from the church from any of the exits, not just simply this one now, you can leave from any of the exits uh, at all, as long as we can uh, respect one another's uh, social distancing as we believe. But now, let us go in faith, in hope and in love. Let us go to love. Being loved, help us to love God and others. And as we go today, may the blessing of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each and all of us and everyone whom we love and care for, now and forevermore.